So I know that you were involved in other things before you were involved in the movies. Um, what was the first thing that you saw in the movies that made you interested in the movies? Did you, was it like a certain actor or a particular hero that you had that made you interested in the movies? Um, always wanted to be in the movies and stuntman, whatever, you know. I was a massive fan of the, like, the Equalizer, I love Monkey Magic, things like that. I loved the original Star Wars, you know, and I just found it, found it so fascinating. And um, But it was a dream. I went chasing and I caught, you know, but I, got, I had to go into the sports world. I didn't come through no drama school or nothing like that. We, at the time, we had nobody in the family that was in the industry. Um, so when I come the Welsh British kickboxing champion, I got signed up with the sports agency. And um, that's how I got into the industry. And obviously, my first role was playing the Wells in the Prince of Azkaban. Then I got Batman Begins and Hitchhiker's Guides to the Galaxy and Bale from Grendel. And, and then it just, just went off, you know. It's it just... Uh, and the journey still there. Uh, it's still going. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, um, how did the it's the first going, and the Harry how did the Harry Potter thing come about? Because you 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 were doubling for the werewolf, weren't you, in the in Prison of Azkaban? Is that right? Yeah. Well, when I like when I got signed up, the, my first agency was called Sports Workshop in Crystal Palace in London. Um, at the time, you know, I've done lots of Q and A's. Everybody knows about my my disability, my dyslexia. You know, I'm, I'm handling it a lot better now, but it's something that doesn't go. Away. But at the time, I couldn't read really write, man. 32 years old, could not read or write. I used to read, read Thomas the Tank Engine books, man, you know, and I could read them really bad at 32. It's just the way my cookie crumbled, man. I was more physical, you know, um, struggled in school and high school and, and, and um, you know, going to college and stuff like that. I failed in everything, you know, because I couldn't read or write. I was just, just rolling with it. Uh, so I found the sports world. Uh, and then obviously when I come to Welsh and British champion, I got signed up to the sports workshop. Uh, but uh, they were sending me things like Snatch and things like that. And I was getting that. I didn't, I, 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 couldn't, I didn't know how to act. I couldn't know how to read. And so I was like, what? Well, you know. So the industry went very quiet with me in the beginning for like 12 months before I heard, even heard of me audition, uh, another audition. So when I uh, got the audition for The Werewolf, that's how, that's how I was going to get into the industry through the physicality and learn, the, learn more with the reading. Now I hold my, hold my own with the big boys. So it's great. Yeah. So, but that, so, but when I got the role, um, we we filmed in, uh, well, we auditioned in in uh, Leaf Studio, which is Harry Potter world now. Uh, so I went there. There's a room of thirty odd people, very famous actors and stuff. And now I go, wow, it's him, it's him, it's him, you know. And then we got a call back a week later, and then there's half the room had disappeared. I'm like, oh, where's everybody going? Because I knew nothing about it, you know. And then, uh, and then I got the role. Me and Marnus van der Broek, um, um, a Dutch ballet dancer from London, and yeah, we trained for three months to become. The well, because it's very, very physical. Uh, we were inside a suit where we could hardly breathe or see. So, we did, you, so you had to be very, very fit for it. We were walking on stilts. So 99% of the wolf you see on Harry Potter is CGI, but there's like 1% there on a wide distance shot. And so, so we're more reference for the character. Uh, right. Yeah, that's how I got into, into the industry, man. And they liked it. So they kept on getting the parts for other things. Brilliant. Within, within that first yeah. movie, that first role, were you nervous and... Do you still have nerves now compared to then? It, physically, mate, I was, I, was, I was very, 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 very confident, uh, you know, big span at 30, 33. Yeah. Uh, I was a kid on set that wasn't, hasn't come from drama school and things like that, so it probably showed I was, you know, me, I was giving lots of lessons to Marnie and Ronan Rupert, told by the directors, you know, you're turning this, you're turning in the biggest movie set in the world into a kickboxing class, you know. <laughs> had a lot of fun, you know what I mean? It was good. And, uh, it was it was a good laugh, man. We, me, myself, and Alan Rickman and the crew and some cast were singing "Happy Birthday" to Daniel on his fourteenth birthday, man. Do you know what I mean? Such a beautiful Brilliant. kid. I uh, know he's a yeah. very well established professional actor, but he's still very grounded. He's a lovely guy, and we've worked together, you know, since on uh, Victor Frankenstein. Yeah. Where I play uh, Prometheus and uh, and uh, Nathaniel, the strongman in the circus. So uh, it was great to work with Dan again. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. So, what was it like to work with him again after such a after such a long time? And he's matured into this this other person, this other actor. Did he did he still seem the same? Was it just like old yeah. days, or was it like? Yeah, no, it's Dan. Dan hasn't changed, man. He obviously grown up into an adult, but uh, yeah, no, he's still very grounded, beautiful soul. You know, he doesn't need to prove anything, does he? He's done his hard work, and he's just a lovely guy, man. Lovely guy. Uh, yeah. I know everything happens in three, so maybe I'll catch up with him again one day in the future. But uh, yeah, I really, I really like Dan. You know, it'd be good to see. Yeah. It'd be good to bump in, bump into Amani, Emma Watson one day. I'd, I'd love to bump into her one day and maybe work with her. That'd be cool. 
and uh, on, on the other cast. So uh, yeah, but it, it it was it was a great start to my movie career. You know, to be straight yeah. straight in at the deep end with the big guys. You know, and having a go. And it wasn't. I, I didn't find it. Ner- I wasn't nervous at all. I found when when I had dialogue and stuff, I got I used to get nervous. But I, I've overcome that now. You know, I turn them nerves into positivity. You know, and uh, to have, play with it. You know, so it's great. But monsters, I've got the monsters down, man. They're, they're, they're fun. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, is there a specific skill set you need to play these monsters? I mean, obviously, you've got the physicality. Coming to, to to become the character, it's sort it's sort of. Um, I'm an open gateway to the to the dark side, as such, you know. <laughs> I give the character spirit uh, a living spirit and soul, you know. So they, it's not Spencer. I, I'm in a way. I'm not acting. I become the character. Very strange, and they take over me as such, you know. So uh, it is what it is, man. When you go to these auditions in the beginning, and they, they don't the casting agents, they don't know what they want until they see it, you know. And then as soon as that performers come into the room and he's turned into that character they're like oh there he is you know what i mean it's not like oh he's an, you know he's a bit he's a bit like that one it's not it clicks he's there you know what i mean so if it's got your name over it you're gonna portray it i seem to remember that you've had some incidents on set where like you you're being that character and then you've totally scared people didn't you like te- didn't you terrify a makeup lady or something on the wolf man i forget what the story was now i remember you telling me a few years ago Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, obviously, we all know The Wolfman, and it's, you know, it's an it's amazing Universal remake, 2010. And um, when I got to work with, with Rick Baker, he, the test makeup was for 11 hours, right? 11 hours I sat on the seat, but it felt like three hours because I was really enjoying working. I was really enjoying working with Rick and Dave Elsie and stuff like that. But Rick Legend. was in that room with me, with just me and him, and he was just, work, he was just working his magic, man. And it was just like I was staring in the mirror. I got it twice to go to the loo. I was just enjoying the experience, you know, and the, and the moment with such a living legend as Rick Baker. But they, at the end of the makeup, when they put the big tick on it, they invited, because it was like 40 crew in the creature, creature department working on that suit, you know? Uh, so they brought everybody in the room. Uh, there's the Wolfman. That's him. He's had to tick off, show and tell to the director. Uh, they, but they wanted to celebrate, you know? It's a, it's a big thing. To work, work on the Wolfman. We were all we were all there in, in on a moment working on the Wolfman. I was playing the character, and then we were all the creatures, creature people designing it. Rick's witch magic, and so there was forty people in that room. And Rick, when I go into the 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 mode of the Wolfman, he's a predator, you know. So he's mm. he's feed, he's feed, feeding on fear. Rick goes, "What you're feeling?" And I was in the character by the whispered in his in his ears. I'm feeling there's a girl in the back. She's a little Spanish girl, if I remember correctly. Can't remember her name. And she was like penfold back, you know. And she was hiding. She was hiding behind one of the one of the guys. And Rick goes, as Rick Baker does, you know, he goes, "Go get her." <laughs> I just went as Wolfman, and I, I got this after. And, and honestly, this girl, poor girl, I'm poor girl. I'm sure she had to. She she must have gone to. And comes to the loo after me chasing her that way. <laughs> so I was chasing her down the car room. I was chasing, chasing her down Pirate Studios, around the, everywhere. And the poor girl didn't come back to set for three days. She messed her up. But Rick, <laughs> oh, he goes, he goes if, if, you're do, if you're doing this off camera, you know, imagine when we put all the magic to it. Do you know what I mean? The sound yeah, and everything else yeah. that goes with movie magic. So it was a big tick, and I loved the film, you know. I really did love the film. And, you know, whenever The Wolfman came out, or The Werewolf, you're on your seat. You know, you're, like, on the front of your seat going, whoa, God, you know. It's a great it's a great feeling. The Wolfman, me and The Wolfman, we got on very well, you know. Vigorous hours, we're doing 21 back-to-back sometimes, you know. Five-hour makeups and stuff like that. Going in the makeup chair at 1.30 a.m., getting on set for, like, seven, you know. And then you would get yeah. out of makeup at 11 at night. You know, but the only way they could have got through that film because it was so much going on, and I was the wolf man, you know what I mean? So I was getting it all, but I loved it. You know, the character had a lot of energy. So when I was th- when I was flaking out, the energy, the, the, the wolf man energy used to pick me straight back up again. So yeah. Great. Would the would the first sci-fi thing that you worked on have been Doctor Who then? Well, no, Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy sci-fi, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, of course. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy was the first. So I played the, the Vogon Soldier number one. If you remember that film, 
Uh, I was the yes. guy that chucked him into the chamber. Resistance is futile, saying that, uh, rolling them down into the into the into the like a big like I don't know crate as such. Um, that I was the vocal soldier that rolled over the bush when when they were at uh, Arthur's house and things like that. And you know, yeah. I was doing I, I was doing all the close-up stuff. You know, yeah, it looked like a really heavy movie. costume that. So yeah, but yeah, yeah. And, and Doctor Who. It was a heavy costume, but it was fun, man. I was a very, very fit guy, and um, I was deep into the pro boxing and kick, kickboxing back then as well because I was still active, fighting still. So I was there was like twenty Vogons in the beginning, but it was like twenty Vogons sitting on the wall with one falls off. There's nineteen, you know, and it went straight <laughs> through. I think I was the only. Did it? Me, me, I was the only last one standing at the end. I think. You know, it was good fun though, man. Good fun. <laughs> Working yeah. on Doctor Who series, was that good fun? Doctor Who was amazing, man, because I've been a fan of the Doctor. I was the kid that was hiding behind the sofa, holding the cushion at like five or six. But you had Same. to watch yeah. it, you know? But Doctor yeah. Who then was really scary, man. Them dark, them, yeah. them dark was scary, you know? But you had to watch, and that's and it's great now. It's come back right round a big circle, and they've got scary again, you know? The... the, the the last character I played, the Dregs, you know, I don't know if you've seen that, um, the Orphan ser series on Doctor Who. He, you know, that's the fourth, char fourth character I've played for Doctor Who now. And I love the Doctor Who family. They're beautiful me. And I give them, always yeah. give them 100%. I went on local in Tenerife, up in the mountains. And right up in the mountains, are very volcanic. So it gives you that feeling that you're on like Mars or something. Yeah, but nice. it, wasn't, you, it wasn't Mars. It was planet Earth. And uh, it because of all the the way the humans messed up the world, uh, you know the 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 air. We messed up the pollution. We messed up. We messed it up, man. The way we're going. So so the humans turned into dregs, right? And right. they didn't breathe in oxygen. They breathed in carbon dioxide like a tree does and gives out oxygen, you know. But the, to play the character, he gave me that feeling that it, it, they were in constant pain. Because they're breathing in that, <clears throat> they're breathing it in. So you could feel it and see it through the bodies of these dregs, the pain they were in. You know what I mean? But yeah. they just wanted to, they, you know, they they were they gone back to to caveman state days. You know, they just wanted to yeah. eat any old human. Let's eat them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a great, great story though. Great storyline. It's great. Loved it. Brilliant. So I, I was I was going to mention so in more sci-fi. <laughs> You worked on Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1. You were the big blue bastard. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? I was. Yeah, well, like I say, I wasn't too much of a hot reader in the beginning. Um, so I used to look at comics, comic books, and so I looked at the pictures and I didn't read. You know, I didn't read. So I knew I was working on a show called Guardians of the Galaxy, and my scene was with a guy called uh, Star-Lord. You know, they're very secretive with the, with the, with the scripts. Start. That's when I started to feel the secrecy of the films, where the actor wasn't given the whole whole of the script. They were just given their right. scenes. They didn't want any leakage going out. You know, uh, not that I'd do that anywhere in professional. I will keep it secret. You know. I remember going to um, the premiere with my mum, and I said to my mum, "I said, hey mum, uh, you know, I'm in a film called Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's only a one minute scene. Uh, a guy called Star Lord and a Nick is Walkman." Uh, and then he comes back and whacks me over the head and takes it back. He goes, all right, son, you're in another film. It's all good. I said, okay, cool. So the opening scene, it was so powerful, very cleverly made, that film, because it was his mum, the kid's mum, uh, dying dying of cancer, man, and we all, we're all mm. affected by that. Every family is affected by that. They know somebody or mm. a family member's passed, like myself. You know, we've got, we've got family members that have passed. So and then as soon as that come on, and then I seen him with his Walkman, I went like, ding, the light bulb went off me, and I went straight to my mum. I said, "Yeah, mum, it's only a minute scene, but it's gonna be a good one." The <laughs> film, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was brilliant. It was so amazingly made, and it was great yeah. to work with James Gunn. It was a good um, job, you know. Was just, and I got yeah. to do uh, yeah. some behind the scenes special features as well. With the with the, oh, really? the mean guard dancing through the prison and stuff that, that you can see on the special features. Was that an improv thing when you start well, that, dancing? The dance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, well, well, James Gunn come to the trailer and it was like, "Do you think you can do that?" I said, yeah, no problem. Half an hour, no problem. We got that. So I did it, 
we did the little dance and you everybody laughed on set. It was brilliant. And James Gunn goes, hey, man, that was that was great, but it was too good. Do you think you can dance like an alien? I said, listen, you've employed an alien, you've got an alien. So, yeah, <laughs> so we did that off the cuff, man. And we had half an hour to do it and we got it, you know. And it was a, it was a very, very, very funny scene. And when I come off set, I was got I got in with my driver who was going to take me back to my hotel. And James Gunn jumped in front of the car almost. He said, stop, stop. So he pulled me out of the car and he goes, Spen, got a thing going on with Play-Doh. You know, we know Play-Doh, right? Yeah. And he passed me this tub of Play-Doh. And he goes, there's, there's a tub of Play-Doh. I said, what's that for? I thought he was taking the pee. You know what I mean? And he goes, no, any, this is a huge production. We've got over 2,000 people in this production. And I give out only a handful of these to somebody who's done. It, they could be, it could be the cleaner. It could be the guy behind the camera. It could be an actor on set. I, one who's done an exceptional, brilliant, brilliant job of that day. Yeah. And I'm giving it out to, play to give you this. And I went, okay, I thought, <laughs> and I thought, guy, man, it's, that's not happened to me before. <laughs> no. <laughs> so all this, of there course, go, led man. Darth Vader. So how did the audition for that first come about? Right, okay. My agent calls me up. We all know, especially all the fans who know Star Wars taking place, and Darth Vader is rumoured to be coming back. You know, mm. but it's just a rumor. So uh, when I got the audition, um, Joe, my agent at Morello Cherry uh, Actors Agency, uh, Darren and Joe, uh, they said, "Listen, we've got a self tape coming. Can you come up to the? Can, we, can you come up to the workshop?" I said, "Yeah, no problem." Um, I said, "What's it for, Joe?" And he goes, uh, "We don't know." Oh, what do you mean you don't know? They, they won't tell us. I went, "No, well, that's a bit weird, isn't it, Joe?" All right, okay, I'll be up there tomorrow. And they passed us a, a, a script, and apparently, this guy had great authority, so he's one of the chiefs or whatever, great authority on one of the ships. But they still wouldn't tell us what the production was. They blanked out the name, and they just give us this script. So I'm reading through it and blah, 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 blah. But I had this, I did have an inkling it was Star Wars. I, I just had a feeling. Anyway, we got a second call back. So I went back up to the to workshop a few days later. And now they've released, yeah, it's Star Wars. I went, yeah, I, I knew it, I knew it. Uh, brilliant, great. So, But they still wouldn't release who we were auditioning for, you know, for, for the character. So um, I was reading it and I was saying to Joe, I said, Joe, this is Darth Vader, man. And he goes, no, 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 it isn't. I said, Joe, I'm telling you, this is Darth Vader. He goes, why are you saying that? I said, because every time at the end of the line, he's going... But anyway, so that yeah, so that's that's it. And then we then we got the final audition up at Pinewood Studios, and that was the the tick on the cross. And we luckily we got the uh, the tick, and we tried. You know, the suit was there. And we got to go right into character, and the rest is history, mate. Yeah, so me and Dan played the part, and the fans liked what we did. Uh, yeah, long live. Yeah, it's Vader. brilliant. <laughs> it was terrific. I mean. Yeah. What was, what was it like to get the costume fitting to start with? I mean, that must have been the thing where you're just like, oh, my God, I'm Darth Vader. I've got the cl I've got the outfit on and everything. Yeah. Yeah, listen, listen, right. I, I knew, I knew this character, how powerful this character was. And I knew he was going to change my life a little bit. Do you know what I mean? And he was one of the, one of the most powerful presents I've had, had the pleasure of feeling, you know? Because you don't just turn Vader on. He's he, like you say, the, the presence and the spirit. There's a real Darth Vader out there, guys. Trust me. And he takes over the actor. And so when when we got to the audition at Pamela's Pants, you know there was the boots, and I was like, oh my, you know, you're not looking at it like a costume. You're looking at it like the mother ship. You know what I mean? It's like whoa. And it literally was. If they didn't put my measurements there, it was literally if the slipper fitted. You know what I mean? They put the boots on, and they fitted like like a gem. As soon as I chopped my toes off, now really, but they did they did fit, and it was amazing to have all the suit on, man. It was just you, you were at one with Vader, then you become the character, and it's just like yeah, you know, you, did you die, find... are die hard Star Wars fans. Imagine putting, yeah. imagine putting the suit on. When you had the suit on, did you find yourself doing the voice and the breathing and all that? Well, they, the, the character when, when the character comes to, I know it's. Always going to be the legend, the living legend, James Earl Jones, right? That does the voice. Yeah. Uh, but when I got onto the character, the, the the voice came through the character with me. So there was a Vader voice that came through with me. And obviously, it's get better for the other actors to interact with you as Vader, 
not the guy trying to put the voice on and putting the movement in the Vader was in the room. Do you know what I mean? So there's yeah. <clears throat> there's a dialogue that I haven't done the voice for a long time, but they give you additional dialogue, right? And there's a scene there when Krennic meets Darth Vader for the first time, he walks with his steam and he comes in, he goes, Director Krennic, you know what I mean? He gives it all that and he goes, Don't be too sure that the Emperor is as impressed with you as you are with yourself, Director. Yeah. Reckless is not a con you know, and he, he went on like that. Do you know what I mean? But he, he really comes through. So when he got the lid on, man, I was at the beginning, I was going, and he goes, Spen, it's okay, we'll put the breathing in later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, honestly, yeah. it was unbelievable. It was funny. Yeah. You would have yeah. done the same thing. You would have done the same thing. Oh, yes. Absolutely, yes. 100%. But I was I choking to... out credit. Oh, I had him good. I had that credit good. Ben, ben Mendelsohn, was he a good laugh to work with? Yeah, he's a very serious character. He's in his kit. You know, we didn't go out for beers and stuff. He, he, I was, I, I worked with uh, Derek the Krennic, and he worked with Vader, yeah. and that was it. Where it was very, was it. it was a, you know, it, it, there wasn't mess, much messing about going on on set. Mm, too much seriousness no. there. It was a it serious scene, scene. You're right, yeah. man? And Rogue yeah. One for sure. I but I I feel the Rogue One's the best one out of the new ones. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah, there you go. I agree. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So obviously there was there was, there was a few changes from what happened initially when it was filmed to what to when it came out. Like there was a few deleted scenes and stuff. Is have you got memories of some of the stuff you did as Vader that then didn't end up in the film? I can't really tell you too much about a deleted scene because they may bring it back. You just yeah. don't know. But they 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 brought the end scene in where Darth Vader does his thing. Dan did that. He's the sword master man. He's the, he's the man. Daniel Daniel LaPruce. Uh, I did the other scenes of the promotional work for it. But there yeah. there was a couple of scenes that did get deleted, but I can't tell you about them because I'd be breaking regulation. You know, I can't tell you about Fair them. They may bring them back. You never, Fair you never might, know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. but it, you know, a lot of things get shortened and then it and stuff. But but the fans were happy with what me and Dan did. I think they're Absolutely. happy and the productions are happy. So you know, that's the way it is, man. It's terrific. I mean, I know we were we were speaking, um, me and Andy were speaking about your scenes, um, I think it was last week or so, and we were saying that when you walk down the ramp in, in that scene with Krennic, you just, you had the, you had the Dave Prowse <laughs> walk there, nailed. I mean, did you yeah, still Prowse to get it? I mean, it was well, just it, it would, spot it would, on. Uh, it wouldn't say, it's, this is the strange thing about, this is the strange thing about it, right? Uh, Paul, Paul Casey did the movements with us, right? The character was there, but obviously you've got Darth Vader has got a certain walk. Darth Vader has nobody that is playing him. Darth Vader, he's the one character who uses his actors to play him. I hope I don't upset anybody's there. Darth Vader has his movement, man. Yeah, mm. and that's it. Uh, obviously, Dave, Dave Prowse is the movement in there, but it's Darth Vader. So you have, you have to get Darth Vader's walk completely spot on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you've brought a new different Vader on set. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think Dave, I've spoke to Dave a couple of times, man, and he was really happy what we did because, uh, you know, Dave's the man. Dave's number one, man. Do you know what I mean? Dave yeah. Prowse is number one. I, I feel that. I'm a fan of Dave and I hope he's well. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. And, it, you know, right at the beginning, you know what the hardest things, the hardest thing for me to do? The rumor was out for a year before, a year before the evening show come out, somebody's spoken set or somebody's leaked something, right? The Spencer Wilder's reading on Vader and doing whatever on set. I remember Dave speaking to me about a month or so, two two months before the release. He goes, oh, congratulations on Twitter. He messaged me from Twitter. He said, congratulations on la landing the role. And say, say with, uh, same with Chewbacca. He, he congratulated me. And I had to say to them both, I'm sorry, I can't com confirm or deny yeah, that I'm playing yeah. the character. And I was like, rip my heart out, rip my heart out, man. I wanted to inbox him on the quiet, but I couldn't because I'd, yeah. I'd, no. I'd signed the piece, 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 paper, mate. And once you've signed the confidentiality, man, that's it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'll never work again. Why do we do that? You know, I, it's a pleasure for the emperor to ask me to play that character. And <laughs> and, and I'm, in, I'm, thank you very much. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, it's yeah. one of them. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, understandable. So we did have a comment question come in here as well. Yeah. Can you see that on the screen? During Rogue One, did they play the Darth Vader music on set when you walked towards Ben Mendelsohn? 
No, no, it didn't. But I'm playing it. <laughs> I'm it was in here. It was in here. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, that's, that's, that's movie magic that gets put in later on in post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? He's a scary dude, Darth Vader, man, when he walks on set. You know, I'm the closest. Must have been going over seven foot when the helmet on and lid. And when he comes on with that presence, man, you, you know when he's on set. You just, yeah. I, I feel his presence. So, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm inside his ship, you know? I, I, and it's just like, wow, what a powerful, yeah. powerful, powerful production. It is the, the, the most famous magical, movie magical villain. Stuff. You know, Star Wars is going to live on forever. You know what I mean? And it's great the new crop is coming through. All the kids are getting into it now. You know, it's just magical. It's such a special. It's like Star Wars. It's like Star Trek and Doctor Who's and the Game of Thrones. That's the, not so much the Game of Thrones. You know, I think they've stopped now. But the Doctor Who's, they'll keep it go. They'll keep on going, man. It's magic. They'll keep on going. Yeah, new writers will come and go. Yeah, you're right there. You know, you've got to play the greatest villain of all time. Is is, yeah. is there anything else that you want to do? I would like to portray. I would like to portray whatever comes next because every character that I land is a blessing. You know. Yeah. It is, and I've done almost 50 characters, man, and, and I, I'll never take it for granted, man. And if the ride stops tomorrow, I'll still thank the, the, the gods in the industry that uh, thank you very much for this ride and to allow me to live my dreams. And I'll always talk to the kids out there, just try and do well in school. And if you have a dream like this, you know, uh, any dream is any dream. You might want to be the best bricklayer or the best, you know, person that builds flowers, houses, you know, whatever, but... Every dream is special, so, but you need to do well in school to get a good job to fuel absolutely the dream to go and get it and, and yeah. just never, yeah. never give up, kids. Never give up. You keep on following them dreams, man. That's a good message. Good message. Thanks very much, Ben. Yeah. We, we hope to see you again in the suit at some stage. Yeah, we hope to uh, see you back in the suit then, Ben. One day. Right, mate, listen, guys, I love you. Love you guys, man. And I can't wait to see you again on the Comic Con circuit, yeah? Up, man. Yes. Good to see you. Love you too, man. Take care. We'll, we'll catch up with you again yeah. sometime. And uh, listen, listen, listen before I go. Don't give me the power of the dark side.